sent to me, apropos of nothing, via my email port. It was sent to me by an individual that I don't know, and who didn't put any text in the body of the email, didn't autograph, take any authority over their email, they just sent me this attachment for whatever reason. And so I had a look at it. And as you can see, we have a flag up here, and then we have another flag, or what appears to be a flag, and then we have what appears to be some quasi quantum gobbledygook, but it's not correct sentence structure because it's a colon space and then a compound fact. Now, that doesn't really matter because everything else is an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. So why would someone write something like this? And, like, put the title in what appears to be correct sentence structure, but is not. And then the rest of it in plain English adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Oh, this gives us a clue right here. Right here. Mark hyphen lowercase k kishon full colon space all uppercase Christopher. And then we have by Christopher colon Mark hyphen lowercase k kishon. And then we have January 1st, 2023. So that's what this was wrote. So let me stop right there, ladies and gentlemen. All of you full colon mark hyphen lowercase k kishon colon space Christopher apologists out there. All of you cult followers that are on his bandwagon that flood my comments whenever I make a reaction video to his BS. Why would someone who claims to be the successor of Colin David Ivanwood Colin Miller, who claims to have been such good friends with him, and that David was such a great teacher to him and everything like that, why would he write and share a fictitious conveyance of grammar like this? Why would he commit grammar fraud on purpose? Why would he? Just a question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly take this apart. And I'm going to look at a few things. Okay. So this appears to be a flag of some sort. Maybe a St. George's Cross? I don't know. For all intents and purposes, to me, it's a cartoon at this point. So we have... Reading it in plain English, the word long dash black, long dash means to be a slave or dead. So who, you know, the author of this, who the person, even in fiction, who took authority over it, is Mark Lowercase K. Kishon. So I guess he's saying that under this particular flag auspice, that if you're going to use the word black, it means be a slave or dead. Now it can, for someone who claims to be the successor of Colin David Ivanwood Colin Miller, who claims to be the steward or whatever, the successor of quantum grammar technology, the first, number one, the first uh, sentence he gives you, he's telling you that black means to be a slave or dead. With correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, it's one word, one meaning, one and one is one. This is a direct violation of that in theory, in the concept of it. Never mind the fact it's an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So I just thought I'd add one more thing in there to drive the point home. This guy does not have closure on the grammar. And 
is nowhere near, not even within a stone's throw, not even in the same cosmos as correctness as it relates to the quantum grammar technology. So that's out of the way. So let's look at these words and what he's telling the reader that he thinks that they mean. He thinks that Nigerian means dead. Oh, so black means dead and Nigerian also means dead. Naria also means dead. Oh, it means currency for dead people. The river Niagara means it's where they float dead people. The word negro means black. And black means dead. The word mortgage means death pledge. It actually means death grip. Because a gauge is a grip. If you study the parse and go back to the earliest nativity room meaning of it. The word human means monster. That is not correct, actually. If you go back to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word, it doesn't mean monster. But if you use a fiction dictionary from about the 1800s, like a Webster's, they, it will say it means monster. But a hue man, basically a hue is a color, and then a man is a man. And if you parse the word man, it brings you back to the word world. So it basically means colored man or colored world. Parliament means speaks lies. The word white means European or North African, meaning any of these people in other parts of the world cannot claim nativity. Oh, so, so Mark's telling people what they can and can't do now, as if he has the authority to tell anybody what they can claim. The word person is not people, but a persona, an actor's mask. No, actually, a person is a person, and a persona is a persona. There's two different things. So when you use the word person, then you are saying you are an actor's mask. That's interesting because in Colin David Ivan Colin Miller's textbook, he uses the word person all the time in it. The word calendar, book of debtors, metaverse, death of the universe. The word Black's Law Dictionary means law for the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, the word Black's Law Dictionary. That's three words. That's three words, Mark. Which one of the words means law for the dead? Now, if it were if it were hyphenated, it would make more sense. When a name is written in all capitals, it signifies a dead man or a woman. So I wonder why he put his last name Christopher in all caps. Is he a zombie? To help you not fall into jeopardy, we have educated you under penalty of perjury under the misprision. Misprision. I know he likes to throw that word around. Misprision. Mis is a particle of negation. So it means no prison. I mean, Mark's very good at parse. I'm sure he already knows this, but I'm can also reasonably guess he's counting on his students to not know that. Uh, all liars and wrongdoers have no immunity. Theaters. Theater is a military term, by the way. All those responsible for creating all forms of theater that cause harm or destroys people's lives physically, spiritually, or mentally are 100% liable for damages in their private and public capacity. Forgiveness can be asked for as a public confession, and forgiveness can be given in the private. Oh. So he wants those people he perceives as wrongdoers to come forward and apologize publicly, but he'll forgive them privately. <laughs> you are commanded to forward this text email to all of your colleagues and associates, family members, etc. So now he's giving commands. This guy, this guy is a hoot. Because so much damage has been done by way of barbarism, heinous crimes, and insidious conduct, the death sentence will be sought by the Chief Federal Postal Court Judge, Muster Master, Plenipotentiary Judge, and 13th, 13th month, Mark Kishon. All caps, Christopher. The zombie? Is he a zombie? He put part of his name in capitals. Maybe he's part zombie. Alright. 
So let's look at some forensics I did on this. So I went through, it showed that it is indeed a fictitious conveyance of grammar all the way through. And I didn't even do the numbers here, which every number here is going to be a pronoun because it's followed by a break in the continuance of the evidence. So I just didn't do the numbers there. Uh, I was pressed for time. But it's not really of importance for this because this really isn't committing any type of harm to anyone or any type of trespass. It's basically a piece of humor as far as I'm concerned. It's a joke. And if you take out those numbers that of the list at the beginning there and just concentrate on these sentences, then uh, it's a knowledge cultivation claim actually right here. So you can see, I, I even put that all caps dead entity there. That's a cartoon, whatever that is. Looks like a stamp though, but it's at the bottom. And, uh, Minister of Faith ordained by Reverend Doc George Christian Azire akin to whatever Angelic Bishop Angelic Azura. These are all particles of negation. So, ladies and gentlemen, just more evidence, more concrete evidence that this guy does not possess correct sentence structure knowledge, is not navigating with correctness within the context of correct sentence structure. He's off doing his own thing with his followers. And if you look at the way he conducted himself back in 2015, 16, 17, and compare it to now, you will see a huge difference. The same thing with Colin Russell, Heifer, J. Colin Gould. If you look at Russell's videos prior to 2016, 2017, and then look at him now, huge difference in conveyance, in attitude, in volition. Well, perceived uh, volition. And it's as I said, you have one side of the coin, which is Mark lowercase cake is shown, and then you have the other side of the same coin, Colin Russell, Heifer, J. Colin Gould. Kind of like the Democrats and the Republicans. You got Mark, you got Russell. Two sides of the same fiction coin. And I've proven it with the continuance of the evidence again and again with hard evidence like this. So, no one who views this channel can say that they didn't know about these landmines, these pitfalls, which I'm sharing with you. And again, this is a, a humorous thing for me to see how serious this guy must be with the way he's conveying this to his public. Now, I'm not, you know, I'll put this on my YouTube channel because I know that uh, Mark isn't going to be able to do anything about it on YouTube because YouTube kicked him off because he was putting so much slanderous BS on his channel that they just see you later and if you followed Mark back in 2017 and 2018 he would tell you how great YouTube is and that YouTube only promotes the algorithms only promote content that is beneficial and of substance and quality that YouTube will put that first so if you want to create content on YouTube make sure that it's factual Make sure that it's true. Make sure that you can prove it. And then he went and totally did a 180. It went against all those things he said at the beginning and began spouting off stuff that, number one, he had no proof of. Number two, was slanderous. Number three, was actually threatening to people. And, I mean, just look down here, ladies and gentlemen. The death sentence will be sought. So, Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher is with the volition of committing murder. Says it right there. Think about that. Thank you for watching. I hope you took this 
the sort of tongue-in-cheek style that I presented it, although it is also serious in that the people that follow that man are very seriously deep into believing whatever he's feeding them. And I'm not going to say that it's bad, uh, because it's their choice to, to want to do that. But hopefully if some of them watch this video, maybe they'll start to think and start to question What's going on with this guy? How could he use the Title IV flag when he doesn't even use correct sentence structure and he doesn't even show any evidence that he knows how to syntax or have closure on what an adverb is or a verb or an adjective or a pronoun or the five syntax patterns or anything like that? How could he claim to be David Windmiller's successor? I mean, what a lofty thing to claim when you only are cognizant or conversant in one element of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, and grammar. And of course, that's parse. He's very good at parse. I give him that. But the other two elements, not so much. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn the grammar and uh, participate with a structured classroom environment, hit me up at the email at the bottom of your screen. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult. You can also join this channel and find some exclusive live streams and content in the members section if you choose tier 2. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.